ناظرین کشمیر لائف کے سائنس ٹاکس میں آپ کا خوش آمدید جیسا کہ آپ جانتے ہیں یہ ٹاک سیریز ہے ڈیڈیکیٹڈ ان سائنٹسٹس کو جو اپنا کیریئر اور اپنی زندگی کو سائنس کو ڈیڈیکیٹ کرتے ہیں تلاش کرتے ہیں گتھیاں سلجھانے کی کوشش کرتے ہیں زندگی کے حوالے سے اس سیریز میں جیسا کہ آپ جانتے ہیں جو سائنس کے ڈفرینٹ اسپیئرس ہیں اور ان میں جو بھی جموں کشمیر سے جو بھی سائنٹسٹس ہیں جنہوں نے کنٹریبیوٹ کیا ہے سائنس کو نالج پول جو گلوبل نالج پول ہے اس میں جس جس نے بھی کنٹریبیوٹ کیا ہے ہم کوشش کرتے ہیں کہ ان سے بات کرنے کی اور یہ سمجھنے کی کہ انہوں نے کیا کیا ہے ان کا سفر کیسا رہا ہے ان کا ان کے تجربات کیسے رہے ہیں اور وہ کرنا کیا چاہتے ہیں تو آج کی اس کڑی میں ہم نے دعوت دی ہے ایک جوان خاتون سائنٹسٹ کو ڈاکٹر بینش رفائی آپ کا خوش آمدید کشمیر لائف کی شکریہ سو ڈاکٹر بینش بیسیکلی طبیعت کے حوالے سے اس پہ کام کر رہے ہیں جس کو یہ ٹیوبر کلوسس ہے بیکٹیریل انفیکشس بیکٹیریل ڈیزیز ہے یہ پوری دنیا میں جتنا بھی سائنس نے اس پہ کام کیا لائف سائنس میں چاہے جو ڈفرینٹ اس کے سب اسپیکٹس ہوں تو لیکن پھر بھی یہ ایک چیلنج ہے ابھی تک جس کا ہم کچھ زیادہ کر نہیں پائیں گے ان کمپیریزن ٹو منی ادر ڈیزیز جو پینسلن کے دور سے جو بڑی کوشش رہی اس پہ دنیا کی بہت ساری لیب اس میں کام ہو رہا ہے اور یہاں بھی کام ہو رہا ہے ڈاکٹر بینش اس وقت ہمارا جو سی ایس آئی آر کا ریسرچ انسٹیٹیوٹ ہے جموں کشمیر میں اس کا جو سری نگر میں گئے وہاں کام کرتے ہیں تو ڈاکٹر صاحب شروعات ہم اس بات سے کریں گے کہ جو ٹی بی ہے ٹی بی کی سچویشن کوئی امپرومنٹ ہوئی ہے جو بہت سارا کام ہوا ہے ٹی بی کے حوالے سے اور اگر ہوئی ہے تو ہم ابھی کیوں اپنا سر کھپاتے ہیں ٹو انویسٹیگیٹ مور اینڈ ٹو مینیج اٹ بیٹر کیا ہم فیل ہو گئے ہیں ہم فیل تو نہیں کہہ سکتے ہیں بٹ اگر ہم دیکھا جائے ہمارے کچھ اچیویبل ٹارگیٹس تھے دیٹ ویز سیٹ ان that we planned ke at least we should treat 40 million people like up to 2020 and we should also have lower mortality rates and there should be achievable targets but agar hum dekha jaye i'm not sure whether it can be because of the covid jo hamara beech mein hindrance aa gaya itna sara to humne koi bhi target achieve nahi kiya hai in terms of incidence rates jo hamara targets tha that's lower right we have not reached up to that ہمارا ٹارگیٹ تھا ٹو ریچ اباؤٹ فورٹی ملین پیپل ٹو ٹریٹ دیم گلوبلی اینڈ وی آر اونلی اپ ٹو تھرٹی سیون پرسینٹ آف اوور ٹارگیٹس رائٹ سو دیز آر سم آف دا تھنگس بیکاز اف یو سی اٹس اے گلوبل ڈیزیز اینڈ ان دا ان ساؤتھ ایسٹ ایشیا اینڈ ان ویسٹرن پیسیفک یہ بہت زیادہ پرولینٹ ہے انسیڈنٹس ریٹس بہت ہائی ہے تو بیچ میں ایک اچھی سی نیوز تھی وین وی سی ڈیورنگ دا کووڈ بیکاز ٹرانسمیشن کم ہوا تھا آپ نے ماسکس پہنے تھے آپ اس برڈن کنٹریز میں آپ کا جو ڈسٹنسنگ تھا لوگوں کا بیچ میں سوشل ڈسٹنسنگ وہ کم ہوا تھا تو دیر واز لائک اے ڈپ ان ٹرمس آف ٹی بی انسیڈنٹس ریٹس جو آپ کا گلوبل ٹی بی رپورٹ آیا تھا ٹو تھاؤزنڈ میں سو وہ تھوڑا سا ایک ہیپی نیوز دے رہا تھا دیر واز تھرٹی سیون پرسینٹ آف دا ڈپ فرام ساؤتھ ایسٹ ایشیا اینڈ ویسٹرن پیسیفک بٹ دین اف یو سی لائک یہ والا جو ڈپ تھا انڈیا میں بھی ہم نے دیکھا کہ سرج بہت کم ہوا تھا سو اس ٹائم پہ ہمیں آئیڈیا نہیں تھا ویڈ دس ڈپ از ڈیو ٹو بیکاز ڈیٹیکشنس پراپر نہیں ہوئی بیکاز جو ان کے انسٹرومنٹس تھے جین ایکسپرٹس جو ڈیٹیکشن سسٹمس تھے دے ویر یوز فار دا کووڈ سوشل ڈسٹینسنگ کی وجہ سے بہت سارے لوگ آپ کا ٹریٹمنٹ نہیں کر پائے ناٹ بیکاز دا ٹریٹمنٹ واز انٹ اویلیبل اٹ واز بیکاز دے ویر آفٹر ٹو گو ٹو دا ہاسپٹلس اینڈ دے ویر مینی فیکٹرس ایسوسیٹیڈ بٹ ابھی آپ دیکھا جائے تو ٹو میں ابھی ہمارے یونین منسٹر نے ایک آپ کا نیوز دیا تھا جس میں انہوں نے آپ کا کچھ ایسٹیمیٹس بولے تھے تو الیون پرسینٹ دیر از اے رائز ان ٹی بی سرچ رائٹ اگین ان انڈیا آلسو دا ایم ڈی آر ٹی بی جو آپ کا ڈرگ ریزسٹنٹ ٹی بی ہے اٹس آلسو آن دا رائز اوکے سو دا ایگزیکٹ سینریو وی آر ناٹ شیور اپ ٹو واٹ از ہیپن بیکاز وی آر آل وی آر بزی ود کووڈ ڈیورنگ دا پاسٹ کپل آف ایئرس سو دیر دیر آر لاٹ آف تھنگس دیٹ وی نیڈ ٹو ورک آن ان ٹرمس آف ایسٹیمیٹنگ دا ٹارگیٹس ٹارگیٹنگ دا انسیڈنٹ ریٹس ٹارگیٹنگ دا پیپل ہو آر ہیونگ دا ملٹی ڈرگ ریزسٹنس ٹو ریچ ٹو دا پاپولیشن یو نو ہو ہیو ٹی بی اینڈ دے آر ناٹ گیٹنگ ٹریٹیڈ دے آر ناٹ ہیونگ این آئیڈیا ٹو گو ٹو دا ہاسپٹلس اسپیشلی ان دا امپاور زونس جو کشمیر جو انڈیا میں بہت زیادہ ہے اف یو ٹاک اباؤٹ اروناچل پردیش اف یو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا ہلی ایریاز ان دا کشمیر اینڈ سم ادر پلیسز اینڈ آلسو ان دا سلمس اینڈ ادر ادر ایریاز سو وی نیڈ ٹو ٹاک وی نیڈ ٹو ڈو لاٹ ان ٹرمس آف دس اپارٹ فرام دیٹ اف یو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا سائنس سائٹ وی ہیو ٹو گڈ میڈیسنس دیٹ وی ریسنٹلی بیکیم ٹو دا مارکیٹ دا پیراکولین اینڈ اینڈ مینڈ 
तो वो आपका शॉर्ट कोर्स थेरेपी आपका पेशेंट्स का आया एंड इट हेल्प लॉर्ड बट स्टिल वी वी डोंट हैव द वैक्सीन येट दैट नीड्स टू बी वर्कड ऑन बिकॉज इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द बी सी जी वैक्सीन इन एडल्ट इट हैज़ नो एफिकेसी इवन इन द चिल्ड्रन इट डजेंट स्टॉप यू फ्रॉम गेटिंग द टी बी बट इट स्टॉप्स यू फ्राम गेटिंग डिसमिनेटेड टी बी लाइक द टी बी मैनेजाइटिस जो बच्चों में होती है दिमाग में चढ़ जाती है और अ काइंड ऑफ अ टी बी दैट दैट स्प्रेड समंग दैम सो देर इज देर इज नो एफिकेसी टू लिटल एफिकेसी अमंग द चिल्ड्रन एंड देर इज काइंड ऑफ नो प्रोटेक्शन इन एडल्ट सो येस वी नीड अ गुड वैक्सीन especially in the countries which has a high tb burden and also the global and also we need a new drug targets you know that that we we cannot wait for getting it to resistant to the new drugs that are upcoming so we we need to be ready for some areas of the science but from that so there are a lot of people who are working in these areas and the problem is that uh they work day and night and then there are a lot of the trials clinical trials so the vaccine pipelines that nowadays we have are from uh, germany they work on them and it's max planck institute mvpi vaccine and then there is from the kerala but the problem is then it just gets failed in the second phase or or the third phase so that's why more and people we need to work on these areas so that we can have some better drugs some better vaccines in the future right so yeah there is a need to work on this it's actually a fight a global fight that we need to do and also uh, we need we need to work on on these things because I mean, if you see the economical class of the people the who are more associated with you know the economy and all the adult age group of 18 to 35 they are more more affected by this right so we we have to see in all aspects because tb it affects us economically it affects us in all terms So yeah, science is required for this. This piece. so yeah. uh, so Dr. Sir, what you are basically what I could understand is there are now two clear visible exactly. uh, tasks. One is to manage the existing load exactly and have better uh, drugs to manage that. And second is to manage what we say to to nip the evil in at the bud exactly. Yeah. So uh, so it is the complete TV research has got this. They caught exactly. me now. Two tasks. It's a two detection, uh, yes. detection, treatment, and in the science area, it's it's working on the new drug targets and also on the approach for just establishing the new vaccines. Yeah. Oh, what is the state in Jammu and Kashmir? State of TB. In recently, I think the two districts were given the green zones for TB, and um, uh, there is like uh, not clear reports, but as of now, we are having the green zones like the uh, Nag area and the other areas. But yeah, we need some more reports during the com- upcoming years to get a clear picture of it. Yeah. Before we talk about your uh, mm-hmm. scientific pursuits and your current research, जो हमारे नाज़रे ने वो जानना चाहेंगे बिनी शुरुआती कहाँ से उसका मतलब जर्नी नॉलेज की क्या रही स्कूल से लेकर शेषायत तक या सो इट वाज अ ब्यूटीफुल जर्नी आई आई डिड मिस स्कूलिंग फ्रॉम बुडलैंड हाउस स्कूल शिवपोरा so up to the 10th i studied there and after that i did my 11th and 12th from kotibag uh uh then i tried for a medical examinations once and uh i later on uh skipped that plan and i i went and i did my graduation in medical microbiology from dehradun i was always fascinated for the microbes to see these tiny creatures under the microscopes and i was always like they create so much of the disturbance in the world and you know you cannot see them even so i was very curious to work on them so after my graduation in medical microbiology from dehradun i pursued for my masters in microbiology i did the same from i did this from the same institute and then i i joined aims delhi i i qualified the phd entrance there i joined a clinical microbiology division uh, under dr sarman singh uh, he's a very well known clinical microbiologist and he has a lot of good base patents for toxoplasma leishmania and a lot of good tb work so i got my phd training from uh, uh, aims delhi only after that i did one one year of senior residency at aims bhopal because i wanted to cover all fields of uh, microbiology right like not in the tb only to get a picture of all of how we diagnose detect work on other microorganisms so i i worked at aims bhopal as a senior resident for one year 
there uh, I was uh, uh, posted in various microbiology divisions in the parasitology, the mycology and uh, the bacteriology. So it was a very good experience of handling uh, the clinical strains and uh, seeing how the patients are getting, you know, affected in the hospitals with nosocomial infections and how to diagnose them, how to report them. So it was a very good training. Uh, after that, I went to a postdoc training uh, at McGill. I worked there with the Dr. Marcel Beher. It is in Canada. Yeah, it's in McGill in Canada. So there, I got a very good training of uh, working on MTB. Uh, so my uh, work on there was on the Mycobacterium oritis, and uh, in terms of um, animal models, I worked on the pathogenicity of Mycobacterium oritis and the genomics of Mycobacterium oritis. So after that, I, I applied uh, for a Manhattan Fellowship. Uh, I wanted to uh, come back to Kashmir because after all these trainings, I wanted to utilize it here and to work for the people here. So I, I joined at the CSR IIIM after getting this Ramanujan Fellowship and here I work on vaccine development for TB. Uh, you have a PhD, kiya, PhD mein, but where are the takeaways from your PhD? Okay, the takeaways, uh, uh, so um, tuberculosis is actually, we know it as a disease, right? So you did a PhD around tuberculosis? No, I, uh, yeah. I, uh, it's, it's not around. I worked on uh, clinical strains of mycobacterium tuberculosis. I can explain you like uh, we know the just the disease tuberculosis, but there is a lot in the bacteria that is going around it, right? So the, in, during the evolution, the same thing happened with mycobacterium tuberculosis. There were many strains that comes up, right? So there are a total of the seven strains, or you can say the lineage of tuberculosis, and some are very really good, like if you get infected with them, that's easily treatable, you can say. Some are very really virulent if you get infected with that strain, so it is like known that they are more prone to drug resistance, the reactivation of the disease is more, the dissemination rate is more, right? And the drug resistance rate is more. So uh, I worked on all these lineages. So the basic question was to see that what is the transmission of these lineages in India overall? Like how are these strains evolving in India? Are there some new strains that are evolving? Or what is the, what is the point that why we are getting so much of resistance, right? So what we did, we worked on different centers from India and there were like a lot of the samples coming to our, our Ames Telly. And then there we, we did grow them, we cultured them, and then we worked on the drug resistance. So what we found that even the multi-drug resistance, like that is resistant to two TB drugs. Apart from that, there's under the term of extensively drug resistance. That's like, there is no treatment for that, right? As of now. So we saw there is a particular lineage known as the Beijing lineage. That is very prevalent in India, and that is among the people who are, you know, prone to drug resistance. So among our study, we found 52% of such strains are associated with drug resistance significantly. And these are the modern strains, you can say. During the evolution, they have evolved as modern strains. And the previous strains, they are all, you know, the you can say the old strains. So they are not so lethal as compared to this one. So we worked on this Beijing lineage and then our second task was what is happening in these Beijing lineages, why they are becoming so, you know, resistant and why, what is going on with them. And we see during the evolution, these strains were not normally present in all uh, areas, geographical areas in India, like every strain has occupied its place, right? So if we see to the Punjab in North India, there will be a Central Asian strain. And if you see the other uh, South India, Bangalore and Tamil Nadu and other places, there is an East African Indian. So there are all strains have occupied their place. But despite that, this Beijing strain was supposed to be from the Arunachal Pradesh or the Northeast region, because from the China, this strain we, we, the, during the evolution has arrived. But during the resistance and um, but during the epidemiological and transmission survey, we found that these strains are circulating all over all over India, despite the geographical regions and everything. And if you also uh, see the northeast part of the India, there is more TB drug resistance, right? So the people there are more vulnerable to TB, and they are having a lower, more lethal infections in the other parts. It's because the prevalence or is the Beijing lineage. So our this study was published in the scientific reports in 2018. And the other study from the Northeast India, like the one which I explained, it was also published in the journal Genes recently. So we predicted that the Beijing lineage is a kind of a resistance strain among all the TB strains. It's circulating among the drug resistance strains in India. And further, we need to incite that what is happening in the Beijing strain and why it's getting prone to drug resistance. And then we try to work on the comparative genomics 
it's just like aligning the genomes of all the uh, strains of TB and then when you align all the genomes then you see what is common in all of them what is different in all of them right so we we got some of the uh, hints like what's going on there is a particular um, gene uh, there's known as CRISPR gene it's known to provide some adaptive immunity to the bacterial cell but in case of the Beijing we see that is deleted right and we are not sure whether that is the cause for the vulnerable resistance because it doesn't have adaptive immunity it doesn't have DNA repair mechanisms maybe it's making it more more vulnerable we are not sure but this was our finding from our study the first ones and this was like um, a PhD concept right uh, out of curiosity I just wanted to Okay. Uh, understand. We are told that viruses are the most intelligent okay. organisms. Yeah, they and are. They mu mutate quite fast. Yeah, exactly. When you talk about the evolution of bacteria, do you say the same thing that they mutate, or it is a different uh, process? And w uh, what is the net process of evolution or mutation between these two bacteria and the virus? Well, the, in the viruses, you, you, it's a different scenario because yes. they mutate fast. But uh, about the tuberculosis bacteria, the evolution, it has taken a million of years, right? And when you just, uh, it's an adaptation, it's an environmental pressure, it's the epigenetic change. There are many factors that are responsible for for changing the, you know, the genomic architecture of the strain. So it's just like they, when they get adapted in different locations, in different hosts, in different races, so they, they acted differently. So it's not a single day procedure like the development of all these strains. It, it happened during the millions of years of evolution, right? That's why we describe the old strains of TB and the modern strains of TB right we know the features genetic features where we call it modern what is deleted in them that's why we call them modern and what is present in them that we call them old on the basis of that these all lineates we are having uh, seven total lineates it's all basic on the genomic architecture and the findings that that we distribute them accordingly so these yeah. seven strains are global these seven strains are global yeah but but the lineage one, I explained the Beijing one, it is more vulnerable to drug resistance, yeah. It's in China, it's in, it's in India, and it, it's, it's circulating in Russia also, like the more, you know, the places where we see the more so FDR uh, drug resistance, yeah. So which strain is in Kashmir? Because... In Kashmir, we have not yet done any epidemiological and transmission studies yet. So uh, I have not seen any, any data uh, about uh, strains that are circulating. But uh, yeah, we in future can plan and work on them. What was your uh, postdoc all about? Yeah, my postdoc study, it, it was really quite interesting because it, it we have a dilemma here in India that uh, we get an infection of Mycobacterium bovis from animals, right? Now, I talk about the lineates that's a separate thing but it's just like the a bacteria has these lineates the back mtb then there is a cousin of mtb m bovis mycobacterium bovis which causes infection in humans but it gets transmitted from animals right like if you drink unpasteurized milk right and the animal will have a mycobacterium bovis infection it may get transmitted in you so, so the severity is less than the tb right but virulence is more but it is still the tb it is still the TB, but you can say a different form of TB, right? That's why I explained in a simple language, you can say it's a cousin of M. tuberculosis, mm. right? So the dilemma was here that Mycobacterium bovis is circulating in India as an animal pathogen, transmitting infection in humans, right? Uh, so uh, the thing is, you, it's not clear that M. bovis infection is transmitted from person to person. That's why we don't have a lot of M. bovis infection here. It's clear that it's a zoonotic disease that we get from animals, right? So it's from a cow to a human. If you just get close to the animal or maybe infected animal, I must say, or you you take the unpasteurized milk or some the meat or stuff, you know, that's infected one. So you get embobus infection. So my postdoc thesis, it was basically on the fact that embobus is not present in India at all. So the question was uh, that uh, there are the, the cows, two types of cows. One is adapted in Europe during evolution and one is adapted in India during evolution, right? So what had happened, Embovis had got adapted in cows in Europe. So Embovis is in Europe. And when there were reports from there that there's an infection of Embovis in humans there, here when we get MTB infection, sorry, tuberculosis infection from animal to humans in India, they also 
thought that it may be Embobis, right? But we don't have any cultures, you know, the grown cultures of Embobis that, that can prove this, right? So my postdoc was basically on the fact that we don't have Embobis in India. It was based on the fact that many of the cultures that we're supposed to have um, tuberculosis, like it was patient from MTB, because all diagnostic tests, they detect tuberculosis here. They don't say you it's Embobis or MTB, right? And because TB is prevalent, we, we think like it's MTB, right? So the thing is, uh, in India, there is Mycobacterium oridis. There was a study done in, uh, I think, 2019 from the same institute where I went. What they did, they took all the cultures, whatever the TB cultures were there, and they did the genome sequencing, right? Like they sequenced the genome. And they found the 7% of the cultures were Mycobacterium origes, and there was zero bovis, and others were MTB. So the possibility of M origes in India, it predicted that M bovis is present in Europe, and, and M origes is present in India, like a zoonotic infection pathogen, right? And all, and they what they uh, did. There were different centers in in um, different places and across the globe, like in the New Zealand, in the Australia, in Canada. They got the patients from India having TB, right? And when they did a genome sequencing, they found it MRIs. So whatever the patients they had there having MRIs infection, they were from India. So they they predicted that it's something that is in India and nowhere in the world, right? Because all we are the Indian patients, and even the study from the Chennai. They also, that, that was present, uh, published in The Lancet, and they also shown that, you know, uh, that the MRIs is circulating. So my, my thesis, basically postdoc work, was to identify this MRIs genome structure. You might be knowing that about the reference strains, right? There is a strain which is known as a reference strain, like you can say the reference strain of MTB, or you can say the reference strain of streptococcus, and then whatever you get diagnosed from the clinical, the clinical samples of all this, you align it with this and say, yeah, it is streptococcus, based on this alignment with the reference strain, right? So what my work was, we don't have any reference strain for mycobacterium oritis, right? So I had to develop a circular reference genome of MRIs so that whatever the cultures, whatever the samples that were suspected of MRIs, can, we can say surely it's MRIs after alignment it with the reference strain, right? So it was the first circular reference genome I constructed of MRIs. And then my another thing is to see the pathogenicity of this reference strain, like how virulent it is. We have no idea, right? Because the virulence we know by um, either, you know, if this disease is prevalent and you see the symptoms and you come to know that, yeah, the disease is like this or diseases like that. But in Orijas case, we have no idea because I think that most of the people in India, they even don't know about it, right? So uh, what I did, I checked the pathogenicity, I, I infected the mice models there, right? And to see how virulent it was. And what we found that it was even more virulent than TB, right? And even the reason we found that there was a particular protein that was present in oritis and due to this there was a lot of secretion of a single protein right and due to the presence of that protein our immune system was getting more evoked and ultimately it, it was resulting in like a damaged and you know a death kind of a state so in mice models it was very virulent so my finding was to construct a reference genome and second one was to see the virulence of the pathogen so i, I learned a lot there i was i got a very good training there and then I, I plan to, you know, utilize all this, what I have learned here in Kashmir Bakya. Yeah. So what are you are working around? Are you working at the top, same the bacteria, the same disease? Uh, well, I, I realized in the training that uh, we need a vaccine, I, I told you, because uh, this vaccine, the BCG strain, which was used for the vaccine, was developed like in 1921, right? And then what happened after that? Different countries took that strain. And uh, it's, a, it's a BCG Denmark named under this, BCG Pasture under another strain, BCG Russia under Russia. So during different subcultures, when you do a repeated subculture of a strain, you lose some of the characteristic of the strain. So there were some proteins, some deletions, because in the 1921, it wasn't so advanced that you will be having a complete genetic architecture of that strain, right? So you were not sure what was exactly in, in that organism. So the things start getting depleted, the genes were getting depleted, during so much of you know and there were a lot of variety of the strains and slowly uh, the uh, the efficiency of this BCG strain to pro provoke our immune system and give a protection against TB it also went down so what is the scenario now that we don't have an effective TB vaccine as of now which is a need especially for the developing country like India and a high burden TB country right 
so the thing was like I plan to work on the same concept so my, my uh, work here is on I work on membrane vesicles of TB so these are some of the vesicles that are released from the bacteria right there you, you can say that the bacteria release these vesicles in a simple language and these vesicles provide a different role you know they circulate inside the host they evoke your immune system in a different form like in a positive manner in a negative manner right they do the cell signaling and there are several several of you know factors that influence this right so these membrane vesicles secreted by tb are already known to have a role in an immune evoke Evasion, right? So you know that this membrane vesicles it evokes our immune system and and several things. So what I thought, I, I thought to engineer this BCG strain, right? If there are some vesicles that are actually helping us our immune system in a positive manner against an infection, so we can we can engineer this BCG strain with these vesicles so that they release these vesicles and it can actually enhance the efficiency of this strain, right? So it's a crude concept which I explained to you. There's a lot behind. Obviously. So the thing is, yeah. So my my uh, aim here was to um, is to work on this PCG strain to engineer this with such such genes which helps it in the secretion of such vesicles that will help and enhance its efficacy, right? So yeah. So uh, you must be uh, also having uh, a lot of researchers working around and mm -hmm. under you. And well, uh, they are also yeah. working on the same thing. Um, as of now, now I will be having some of the students with me to work on this. Uh, it it will be a part of a project, right? Uh, like you know, pro my project is very huge, so it can be uh, in the characterization of proteins first, in the characterizing of genes first, in the characterization of membrane lipids. So there are different parts of my project, and I would be really like I will like to teach people here, the students here, that will be helpful for their future perspective, some of the things. But ultimate goal is to, you know, enhance the vac vac uh, this efficiency of this strain here. Uh, do you have uh, enough and adequate infrastructure, scientific infrastructure, well, yeah. for your studies? Honestly, here, uh, not yet. We don't have an infrastructure here because, uh, you know, the when you when you engineer, you know, the gene knock-in or when you do the gene knockout, even of a, a non-infectious disease, non-infectious bacteria. So the thing is, it can turn anything. You know, you are messing up with the gene. You don't know how it will turn up. So for this, of course, you need a level three facility. Like it shouldn't be another pandemic or it shouldn't happen anything that is not good for the community so you need a level 3 facility for that again i work on tb because for my my final engineering strain i need to infect mice and then vaccine them with this whatever i have i will make and then i have to see whether it's helping protecting or not right so all these things i have to do in a bsl3 facility it's for sure yeah and here in kashmir we don't have any level 3 facility as of now but we are we are like giving a lot of efforts for this we are all together working writing projects to uh, to the funding agencies so that we can have the one here because we have also you know seen during the pandemic when there was a covid how much you you need a level 3 facility for future pandemics right because for the detection of such such viruses, for culturing them, you cannot do it on on a bench top, right? So for my research also, and even for the future people, like the people who will come in the future in the field of microbiology, uh, there is no microbiology research if you don't mess up with the gene, right? So uh, yeah, you need a level three facility for that. Since TB is a global kind of a thing, yeah. So the knowledge pool is global now, and. Mm -hmm. But uh, is there a possibility that you are working on something, an aspect of a, a disease or a, um, a bacteria okay. that many people must be working in other uh, labs as well? Do you, is there some kind of a connect that uh, helps you understand each other better so that mm -hmm. everybody is not busy in reinventing the wheel? Uh, yeah, the thing is, uh, see, on the vaccine part, many people are working. The approaches are different, right? I work on a different approach. Some people work on their different approach. And if you see like um, uh, the previous vaccines, even that will be worked on, that failed in the, level, the phase two and phase three, they were having a different approach. So um, 
the concepts in, we have an ethics in science that the concept that you are working on it shouldn't be a stolen concept it shouldn't be a concept that you have seen them some scientists working and you take the concept it's it's theft in science right so the idea should be novel so the fellowships like i am in a ramanujan fellowship when i applied for this you have to make sure the funding agencies that your concept is novel okay so in science it said you have a hundred ideas then one idea may work right so it, it's like that so, so I, uh, this fellowship permits uh, ensures your funding mm -hmm. uh, for a particular time period yeah so this is actually so what next the next actually the, the it's five years no? or three years it's a five-year fellowship uh, your project and the fellowship grant is for five years but the thing is uh, the, the, the government the, the DST Department of Science and Technology or the Department of Biotechnology uh, they have they, this fellowship is meant to attract the people from outside exactly. to come here to bring and, in. yeah exactly and then the institutes you are working uh, they need to absorb you within this time frame right if there are some positions they need to give preference to people who are having this these fellowships right uh, so yeah, this this is a kind of a scenario. So how where I'm soon not sure. will we see path-breaking paper? Okay. Le authored by Benish Rufai. Well, in this field, the vaccine Obviously. field, of course, I will be working hard on this. But you know, the, the science is not something you can just do in six months or one year. Yes, it takes it takes three or four years for sure to get a very good research paper or good findings. You know that are that are useful for the community. Yeah. So, Binish uh, Rufai, yeah. thank you for uh, thank you so this much. Yeah. Uh, knowledge talk. Thank you. And we hope that uh, we read your mm -hmm. paper in one of the best of journals thank you. in thank you. Uh, science very mm -hmm. soon. And we wish you best of luck. Thank, thank you Thank you so for much. sparing thank so much you. time and to talk to us in a language that we understand perhaps better. Thank you. Thank you.